Well, good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all from the Researcher Respite Charity Trust, who have brought you this event today. We believe events such as these are important to raise awareness around chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID, ME, and FM in the community. This is one of a series of events we're holding. The next event will be held here on the 4th of November, where a grief counsellor will speak. So please do watch our Facebook page for notifications or subscribe to our newsletter or reminders and updates. Now, the Rest for Sure Despite Travel Trust is a charity established to provide practical support to help those with ME, CFS, and FM in long COVID. They have set up meals support programs, craft programs, and mentoring group programs for members. They also have two workshops one at the in Howard called the Charity Boutique, and the other at the Mount Roscoe South, which is called the Charity Corner. We'd love you to support our shops if you can, and we've got some great items in there. And they provide most of the funds for the work we do. So some of the volunteers um, do come into our shops, and they do that to get themselves ready for work, or just for company, or to learn a few new skills. So if you'd like to know more, become a member to gain access to the services. There are pamphlets and flyers and membership forms on the table. Uh, and you can also join up through your website. Uh, and do please do pop in your details. Um, there is a sheet available on the table there. Uh, uh, my name is Kathy, and I'm one of the volunteers that is here to support the trust. Um, and thank you for all those that have come here today as volunteers to help get things set up as well. Um, and I just thank you for coming along. Um, we know that some people do make a, you know, require a lot of effort to get here and you know, they make a planning this event um, quite a big effort for them. So I guess before we get started, quick housekeeping, the, rest, the restrooms are located out in the foyer on the left, just outside there. So now I'm just going to give a warm welcome to Fiona Snyder. So Fiona is a budget advisor from the West Auckland Budgeting. Uh, she'll be talking to us about how you can manage your finances to get the most out of your income. I'm happy to take any questions um, during and after the talk. So thank you, Fiona, for coming here today and sharing this with us. Um, we look forward to you know, benefiting from that vast amount of knowledge. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, Fiona. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Mama. Good everyone. Um, I'm grateful to Wendy for um, inviting me in today and um, I've organised this presentation around so the questions that came through with regard to just please can you help me, where do I start with the budget, what processes do I need to go through. So I'll open up the slideshow. There we go. So um, Just to share a little bit about myself, I'm a painter by trade and um, love the work, love the smell of paint, love being up on a, on a swinging stage on a 12-storey building or in someone's um, bathroom wallpapering the walls, um, love the work. And then I had an injury. Um, one of the men um, took my ladder and when he put his ladder back, he didn't foot it properly. So as I was climbing off the roof, the ladder went that way and I went that way. <laughs> Um, and so I needed to find something else to do to be able to cope with um, the changes that happened at that time. Um, so I'm grateful for those of you that are here because um, I, I understand what it is to, to feel and to be vulnerable. Um, I just wanted to share on my right here, um, at the end, if you could just, these are my evaluations. There's a bottle that says, a little useful, my presentation. Um, it was useful, or it was very useful. So there's some little um, bubbles there, if you can just drop them into what you feel, whether it was a little useful, useful, or very useful. Kia ora. Um, if money grew on trees, we'd be awesome gardeners. I had a friend ring me up, I can't remember whether it was Tuesday or Wednesday, and they said, oh, it's about to go in the garden. Um, 
but it looks like it's going to rain. And so I said, well, if money grew on trees, what would you do? And they said, I think I'll go and get your jacket. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> I took a photo of this roundabout in West Auckland because often this is what we tend to do with our money. We tend to shift funds from one obligation to another. So what I mean by that is the power bill is a little overdue and I need to pay it this week so that it doesn't get cut off. And so I'll just take a little bit from the rent and I'll catch up with the rent next week. So it, it's kind of a, it's a trade-off. It solves one problem. The power is paid, but it creates another because now we're short with our rent. Um, it's a quick fix, but it certainly doesn't provide a, a long-term solution. Um, we call this robbing Peter to pay Paul. So the budgeting, it's a process. It does take a moment. Often we can think, well, what, what's the most important thing? What should I pay first? Um, what are the things I want? What are the things I need? Um, and we all know that costs... Um, our wallets are being squeezed to be able to cover those basic costs. So budgeting's all about, it, it provides a record of what comes in and what goes out. It also helps us figure out where our money should be spent and it results in a financial plan and the plan is the most important part of the budgeting process. And it creates safety in the home. What do you think I might mean? I mean, what comes to your mind when I'm saying budgeting creates safety in the home? Have you got any thoughts? Just whatever comes to your head. Santiago? Yes, uh, first, uh, I apologize for my English. Uh, my English. Oh, uh, but maybe most important in this case is the definition about the safety because the majority of the divorce is the cause, it's the only yes, it's for that. I think if we have that, maybe we have a law marriage. Say that again. So if you have a budget, it marriage. Oh, yes, right. Okay, so you're suggesting that when we have a budget in the home, it creates a harmony in the home with, with, the, with our whānau, with our family, with our loved ones. Thank you. So why budget? It, so that we know where our money is going, not where our $10 are going or our dollar is going, but every cent, actually knowing where every month, centres going, an opportunity to, to keep up with our bills, um, it's an opportunity to pay off our debts faster. So for example, let's say you have two debts and to make things simple, you're paying them both off at $50 a week. Once you've paid one of them off, use that $50 and put it towards the other Debt. So now you're paying $100 off and you're cutting the term of that um, contract in half. And so you certainly will be saving money because of the interest that is charged. Save for any unexpected costs. So often we have vehicles. Um, we are paying off the vehicle. We're putting petrol in, we're making sure that the vehicle is registered and that it's warranted. But some of those unexpected costs might be, uh, especially in today's road-worthy state, um, there's a lot of potholes, and so an unexpected cost could simply be a flat tyre. 
um, and tyres can cost anywhere between $120 to $230. So why budget? Save for those unexpected costs. Um, and treat yourself sometimes. Sometimes they're not very really good at that, especially when our money's extremely tight. Make sure, especially on your birthday, treat yourself on your birthday. I tend to treat myself in winter and in summer. Um, just a couple of treats along the way. Um, and why budget? To meet your financial goals. And your financial goals can be quite simple. It could be um, keeping on top of your bills, making sure that your power bill's paid by the due date. And so it's kind of like putting the, the, the puzzle together, just one piece at a time. So you need to, pre to prepare to budget, you need to look at your income and look at all the, the sources that your income might um, come from. So if you're working and your income goes up and down, it's quite worthwhile to get at least three pay slips um, and then add up those pay slips and then divide them by three. So if you've got three pay slips, you add up the three totals, the net income, and then divide it by three. And then that will give you a nice average of being able to budget from week to week. Maybe you're a student receiving study link in land revenue. Um, you can receive family tax credits, maybe child support, um, child disability allowance, um, work and income, ACC, and so always have a look at your bank statements just in case you've um, thought you earned this much and the payment's either more or less, or maybe you've forgotten about a small income that comes in. So bank statements are really important to go through. So looking at your out outgoing, um, get that information in front of you your accommodation costs, whether you're boarding, renting, mortgaging, um, your monthly bills, get them in front of you, okay? Um, your creditor statements are really helpful to be able to know exactly how much you owe and how much you are or should be paying, and the interest rate is extremely helpful because there's a difference between... Um, the interest you pay, and then if you miss a payment, there's something called default interest. Does anyone, has anyone heard of that before? So if you miss a payment, your default interest could be 32%, it can be 45%. So have a look at that. It's really useful to know what your interest rate is. Um, I know that in the past... Generally, what I tell folk to do is do a credit, do your own credit check and look at what your credit score is. You get a score between one and a thousand. So if your credit score is around 600, you should be able to negotiate your actual interest rate. So most finance companies just have a baseline. Um, however, they'll do a, a credit check and if they see what it will tell them is for every three payments, you'll miss one. So your interest, what they'll charge you on interest will be quite high. But if your credit um, rating is good, then you don't want to pay 28% or 22% or 18%. You, you want to ask them, tell them, no, I don't want to pay that. You need to do better. All right? It's just simple asking. I remember when I moved to Auckland and I got my first little car, um, the interest rate was 22%. I said, no, I'm not paying that. No, and he came back with another figure, no, I'm not paying that. We, we agreed on 14%. So negotiation is important because we work hard for every dollar we earn, so we need to be quite mindful of where it goes. Um, transport, so... Um, that could be petrol or diesel or the bus or taxi fares. I, I learned something this week that I have um, a friend of a friend suffers with epilepsy and the only way they can get around is by taxi. 
and they pay 30% of the taxi and the Ministry of Health pays the other 70%. So I'll be looking further into that to see if there are clients that we have on our books that we can help with that cost or um, I'll certainly train up our budget advisors so that they have that knowledge in their back pocket if someone comes through the door um, that may be able to take advantage of that added income. Clothing and shoes is quite tricky. So when we're doing a budget, if you look at when winter began, you may have needed to buy a jacket or some shoes or um, a hoodie and think about where you shop and how much that costs, and then kind of times it by at least four to give you an, a, a yearly amount of what you might spend on your clothing. And same with your shoes as well. Summer's around the corner. You may need some sandals, jandals, um, scuffs. So think about how much you've spent there, and then just times it by four to give you an average of what you might spend on your clothing and on your shoes. I thought, this is interesting that I put, food at the end when food is like a real priority right um, and when I'm working with folk it's the last question I ask how much do you spend on food and the answer is whatever's left which is why it tends to be a question that I ask last whatever's left so now we're creating the budget. So we've got all the information in front of us and now we're getting down to dollar values. So we record the monthly outgoings. And so I've worked out some figures on a single person. So their water bill is $42 a month. If they're in um, social housing, you tend not to have to pay for water. It's likely there is a bill, but the, um, the social housing is subsidised and um, there'll be a market rate for that home, but the tenant only pays, um, let's say it's a three-bedroom, they might pay 120 If they're a single person, they might pay, um, for, for a two-bedroom, they might pay $60. But there is a market rate, so it is subsidised and the government, the taxpayer, actually makes up the difference. Um, get your power bill in front of you. I know that if you're on a benefit, um, you may be struggling over the next couple of weeks because the winter energy payment has now stopped. Uh, it stopped the 1st of October. And so for a single person, it's just over $21 a week, which is extremely helpful in paying towards that monthly power bill. Um, internet costs. I've just done some figures on moving from fiber to wireless um, and it, it's about $55 a month for wireless and they've got a lot more of those towers up so you um, don't have to go fiber if you're struggling with that cost so wireless is about $55 a month and with wireless you can have a land phone with fiber you can't that's why a lot of businesses today don't have an 09 landline it's all mobile uh, and mobile plan shop around and if your mobile plan is a little more and someone comes knocking on your door and says we're here to offer you a bit a better deal um but st stop and think about it um because you may be very satisfied with your provider so you just go to your provider and say, I've had so-and-so knock on my door and they've offered me this. Can you match it? Never know them not to. All right? Never know them to, not to match it. And I mean, if you have been there with a provider for over 12 months, I call them and ask for a discount. And the discount's usually maybe $10 a month for 12 months. And at the end of that 12 months, you just ring them again, tell them you want, them, you want another discount. Um. Now, with these monthly um, payments, if you want to get to the weekly calculation, you times the monthly payment by 12. Why by 12? Exactly, there's 12 months in the year, and then you divide that by 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year. 
and then you'll get that weekly amount. So creating the budget, record your weekly outgoings. And so, you know, just write down what, what your rent or your board or your mortgage is. Write down how much you spend on petrol. Um, write down what you spend on your bus or your taxi fares. And again, with food. Um, and sometimes it's a bit of a guess, so it's quite helpful to have a look at your bank statements to make sure that you're recording your figures correctly. And if you get a little lost, um, yeah. So the budget's all about putting all the pieces together. So make sure that you record your wages or your benefit correctly. Um, Often what I find with the benefit is folk will say, oh, they only pay me $80, forgetting that there is a bigger amount. It's just that your rent is redirected. That means that before you get your payment from work and income, they'll pay your, um, they would have taken a portion of your income to pay your rent or to pay your water or to pay any, um, uh, maybe your port fines, um, yeah, so it's really helpful if you use MyMSD to go in there and look at your financial information and it will give you a full breakdown of your entire benefit. Disability allowance. Has anyone heard of disability allowance? Yeah, so it covers things like naturally your costs at the doctor, your costs at the chemist, but it also covers things like maybe you're not sleeping very well and... You, you let the doctor know that you'd like to try um, magnesium. So that cost can be added to your disability allowance. You put down magnesium once a month, and then you just go to your chemist and get a quote for magnesium um, monthly. And then they'll just simply add that. It could be physiotherapy. It could be acupuncture. It could be the gym. Um, it could be you're no longer able to mow your lawns. It could include your lawns, your gardens. Um, there is a cap to the disability allowance, which is $75. So if your costs go over that, they can flow onto the temporary additional support. So the disability allowance is generally reviewed one or every two years. The temporary additional support is only for three months. But what I love about my MSD is you can go into my MSD, the um, Work and Income website, and reapply on there for your temporary additional support. So I've got a couple of clients that actually are suffering with long COVID, and so we do that together over the phone, and it takes them maybe six minutes to do that. But it's worth it. Um, accommodation supplement. If you're in social housing, you won't receive accommodation supplement because your rent is already subsidised. But you're, if you're in private rental, whether you're on a benefit or on a low income, you can um, apply for accommodation supplement. So if you're on an income and you're not sure, you can just simply type into Google um, work and income, check what I can get, and then just put your figures in there and it will tell you that you might be entitled to accommodation supplement at 125 a week and so on. Um, check your family tax credits. Um, and because you're just starting out, sometimes it's really helpful just to get a, a notebook and put it in your vehicle or in your back pocket. And every time you step out and spend money, when you hop back in the car, write it down. So it could be simply um, a dairy. Um, so I wouldn't write down dairy, I'd just write, if I'm getting uh, bread and milk, I'd write down uh, food or groceries and how much and then just the date. Uh, but if I'm going to the dairy for Coke and chips, I'd write down personal spending and how much and the date. And then you can go into your bank statement and start understanding your bank statement, marrying up those costs. Debt. Um, make a list of all the people you owe money to, and again, check your bank statements. I took this photo, it's on Lincoln Park Ave in Massey. Um, debt without a plan can become a burden, and I chose this photo because it's quite, it can be 
So debt can be kind of larger than life when we lose control of the repayment plan. Um, it can become quite overwhelming. So if you start to struggle with your repayments, the first thing you do is talk to your creditors. Be open and honest and simply ask for forbearance. We're asking for some time for them to give us, um, to be patient. So we generally, when we're working with someone, we ask for two to three weeks to put a plan in place because it can easily take three weeks. And if we still haven't done it, we'll ring them and let them know we still need another week because it's not helpful organising your budget, looking what you can afford, and then offering them more than that when we simply can't afford it. So we're better off offering something that we can afford, although it will take longer to pay the debt, it will be consistent. Um, and you'd be surprised, I had uh, a, a family that um, came to me in February, and they had a a business, and the business owner was diagnosed with um, melanoma and um, less than a year to live. And so I went around and did a home visit and asked if they'd be happy for me to take away and deal with their creditors so that they could simply focus on what was important at the time, which is family. And so they were willing for me to do that. So I rang their creditors. Um, and so t that was in February. In September, two of the creditors wrote off debt valuing $64,000. They wrote it off. I'm quite aware that when creditors write off debt, they can on-sell it to a debt collector. And then the debt, debt collector can come to you to start making those payments at a lot less a week. But when I ask creditors to write off debt, I also ask them not to on-sell it. And then I ask them to send me an email with us agreeing with that so that I've also got it in writing. Because when you're dealing with organisations, people move on. So I might be dealing with Maddie and then Maddie um, resigns and now... That was the agreement between Maddie and I. And if Maddie doesn't take good notes, um, then our negotiation is lost. And so if you get it in writing, just via email, um, print that out and just put that with your documents. Um, when I took this photo, I thought about options. So when we're talking with creditors, we're looking before we... Uh, while we're doing the plan, we look at how can we increase our income and how can we decrease our spending. So options come in all shapes and forms. And it could be simply something like you're a good cook or you're a good baker or you're good at repairing things and you notice your neighbour mows his strip of grass and would he be willing to, or would they be willing to, accept a chocolate cake once a month and then come and do your lawns? And so it's kind of increasing your income because it's, or, or decreasing your spending because now you're not actually forking out for that. So there's lots of different ways you can look at increasing your income or decreasing your spending. So look at what you're good at. So why budget? Know where your money is going, keep on top of your bills, pay off your debts faster, uh, a successful savings plan. So when, um, when I moved to Auckland, I found the costs here were much more expensive than they were in Wellington. And so it was just me and my girl, and I decided to just save $2 a week. Um, and I wanted to... Um, create an experience and go to the theatre. So in um, November, I had a look at the cost of the shows and had to scratch my head because I wasn't sure how I was going to pull this off because they're very expensive. Um, but at the end of November, when I checked again, there was one show that only had three days left and they were the, the tickets were 50% off. 
And so when I booked the tickets, we also got um, free coffee and cake for two tickets, two coffees and two cakes. So we got dressed up and we went into the Sky Tower. And we found the little cafe and had our yummy hot chocolate. And I love chocolate, so I got a chocolate cake. And my girl loves caramel, so she got a caramel cake. And thoroughly enjoyed that and went into the show, which was Midsummer Night's Dream. And we talked about our favourite character, which was Puck. And so it was a real celebration because we want to really create memories. And the reason it was successful was because every month I'd go in and there'd be a little bit more each month. And maybe I did get a flat tyre. So rather than pulling on my savings plan, which has a, a purpose, I left it. And so it's important when you have a savings plan to talk to it every month so that it stays put. And if you're saving quite a bit, you don't need to tell um, everyone about it. Um, often friends might say, oh, mate, um, can you help me out then? And I can pay you next week. And it's, you can just simply say, well, sounds like you've only got seven days to wait. No, we'll just leave it at that. Or I remember a family member came to me and asked me to be a guarantor on a debt, meaning if they fall over and stop paying it, I'm now responsible. So my answer was, oh, thank you, but no thank you. All right. Um, meet, your financial meet your financial goals. And again, ensure safety in the home. You know, so... You, Debt can, uh, and not paying your bills can, you know, your heart beats a little faster. You go to bed worrying about it. You wake up worrying about it. If you have a budget and you start understanding slowly but surely where your money goes, it will keep you safe. Whether your home is the roof over your head or your home. Now, I found that people aren't very good at talking money. So how can we engage in open conversations about money, whether that's with our family, with our friends, or with our workmates? So we're making a cup of tea and um, we're shooting the breeze. You know, um, you could simply say, when you get home today, we had a budget advisor come and talk to us, and they talked about just share something that may be triggered your mind. It may be, she talked about being safe in the home by doing a budget. What, what do you think of that? And then just try and create those conversations because we don't naturally do it. In fact, when we struggle, we keep things quite close. And when we really struggle, we keep them even closer. You'd be surprised how very much we're all in the same locker, in the same boat. However, we're all going in different directions. So the walker isn't moving forward. It's kind of like going round and round in circles. So be brave and talk about money. A good place to start is talk to a budget advisor um, just over the phone. So in summary, a budget will show you what you do with your money. You know, if I asked you how much do you earn a week, often you can tell me exactly how much goes into your bank account every week. However, if I asked you how much of that do you need to spend every week, you might say, well, my rent's 280 I spend about 120 on food. So you have to start adding it up. You're not really sure how much of your income you need to be spending. Um, it's a financial plan. That's the key, having a plan in place. It helps keep track of the bills, helps you meet those financial goals, and a budget is good for everyone. I've done a budget for um, a gentleman. It was about maybe 15 years ago, and the, their income was just over 300000 So generally we find that someone on a lower income might go to McDonald's, but if they're earning that kind of money, they still go out, but they'll go to a restaurant. So the cost can be quite relevant. You're still spending 
20% of your income on discretionary spending, whether you're on a low income or a high income. Um, so I want to challenge each of you to dig in and do the work, dig in and do the mahi. I want you to pick a day and pick a time. So it could be Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Uh, it could be Monday at 8 a.m. It might be Wednesday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So my challenge to you is to pick a day, pick a time, and spend 15 minutes looking at your finances. So it might simply be going into your banking, online banking, and printing off your, where are we now, September bank statement from the 1st to the 30th of September, a whole month. And then just line out in a highlighter, oh yes, I know where that went. Oh yeah, I can see that was on petrol. Oh yeah, that was for food. And don't, and leave the others that you're unsure of. And there's your 15 minutes. In fact, it might take you 15 minutes to work out how to print out your statement. And next week is another, is another week. And just start looking at your money. It may be... Um, just an opportunity to start getting control of your finances because if you don't control it, someone else will. And what I mean by that is whether it's work and income or the course, they just go into your income and take money out. Right. Um, and remember that it's a process. We're not miracle workers, although I'd love to wave a magic wand for so many. Um, it is a process, so just one step at a time. So, it's time to blossom. We, are, uh, we have an 0800 number. Um, you can book for an appointment in person. We work out of the local citizens advice bureaus in Newlyn, Massey and Henderson. We also do over the phone um, con uh, appointments. And so we would ask you to simply um, email through your bank statement your income, and your debts. And, the, and it's fairly straightforward because we've got internet, everything's generally emailed to us, or we can access it. So just upload it and email it to us. Um, and we like that prior to the appointment. So we're not going through your bank statement with a fine-tooth comb. I would hate for you to look at my bank statement with a fine-tooth comb. Um, what we're looking for is payments that um, are consistent, that you may have forgotten, um, and that when you say your power bill is 180, there's kind of evidence of that. Um, and so that's why it's extremely helpful to get that information up front. Again, I'm Fiona from West Auckland Budget Service, and I'm really grateful to have been here today. And uh, if you have any questions, um, just approach me. Um, and, um, yeah, kia ora. Thank you so much, Fiona, for sharing your words of wisdom. I think um, your guidance and advice has been really much appreciated, and a lot of people feel a lot of value out of it. So thank you. Um, today we just had the one speaker, and uh, just before we finish up, just want to remind that we do have another event coming on the 4th of November, which uh, we will have a grief counsellor who will be speaking to us. Um, so finally, thank you all for coming. And I'm um, taking the time out. I did start to rain, which is a bit of a shame for the weekend. Um, but yes, once again, thank you, Fiona, for speaking. Really, really good. Thank you.